Everyone, twenty to a man. Idris, Avro, have you dealt Edwin a few bruising blows? I have. She'll feel the pain soon enough. Excellent. My men are itching to attack the fortress, but we'd be fools to force it now. Why is that? On account of Edwin's got too many traps and defenses. Her springles cut us to bloody stumps before they poured boiling oil upon us like a summer tempest. Keep the men at the ready. I'll slip in alone and see what I can do about these defenses. By my joints and ankles, you're a tough one. Castle keep looks impregnable. That will be Edwin's last stand.
done, but this should be enough to launch the assault. Now it's down to Giedrich to lead his men. Say we wait. There's too much riding on this. I am Sigurdjian, Lord of East Mercia, and I say we fight now. You're a good man, Sigurd, and I'm thankful for all you've done. But without Eivor, I make no moves. Is it done? It is. And have you laid your poles of hazel and composed your poems for this coming victory? I'm here to speak with Gietrich. Go on, then. Your master awaits. Still dreaming of your precious stone? It is not dreams that led me here, Eivor. I've had visions. Prophecies from the gods. Visions? I'll sacrifice to Tyr this day. The Lord of Justice. The harbinger of flawless victory. Sigurd, what prophecies? Are we ready to assault the castle, Eivor? The sign's importance, read well. We are ready. Give the command. Good. Now let's be quick about it. My scouts tell me a force of King Alfred's men is on the march. Let's end this before that flat-mouthed pudding has a chance to hit back.
Ouch. the lofty lady. Do what you must, Thane of Dungheaps. As one loyal to her shire and her people, I know which of us God favors. Eivor bested you. It's for Eivor to decide your fate. You fought with honor and purpose. For that, I put you in Gidrich's care. You will see you're treated well. I will, so long as you recant your friendship with that pot of warm piss, King Alfred. Agreed. Take her away. I fulfilled my promise to you. I trust you'll do the same. An oath between our people. Aye, ah, you've done us well, Eivor. I thank you. And if ever you need the like, I'll do what I can. I will. Count on it. I'd be quick about plundering. King Alfred'll be on his way. 
And he won't be alone. I have weakened Edwin's defenses enough. Ambushing her soldiers should be my final strike before the battle begins. Kings of the Ancient Ones, the Isu, the gods of the Gat of Gods. I... I've seen this somewhere. I know these words. I... One who stands at a threshold should take great care to look around. For who knows what foes lie in wait in the halls beyond. I have passed through this doorway once before, with Sigurd, in a dream. Not once, a thousand times. A thousand? What does it say, Sigurd? Does it speak to you? Yes. But the words are... ...fogged. Shadowed. And yet I... ...I feel their meaning. And the ash tree... ...I see the grey tree of life... ...her boughs reaching... ...skyward. Opening the way. It's just as you promised, Basim. All you foretold was true. Eivor, I am more than I appear to be. So much more. This is wicked magic, Sigurd. Dark Seder, do not listen. No, this is real. This is everything. To the walls! To the walls! Alfred's come! King Alfred of Wessex! Marching up the rise with a mess of soldiers! Have we time to escape? The men are spent. We've not a chance in blazing hell. A parley, then. We must call a parley. I will speak, and the King of Wessex will listen. As I understand, King Alfred, your name is not spoken with affection here in Mercia. Yet I am close enough to Wessex to hear myself praised from morn till twilight. <laughs> Return to your singing subjects, then. And leave the affairs of Mercia to the Danes. Not for your pagan war songs are safely out of hearing. Off for an exchange. Please, no secrets here. Pleasant is here, my lord. Let's exchange men. My best warrior for yours to prove peace. After which you leave Mercia, and we fall back north of River Ouse. These terms are fair. Wolfrich! My war thane. You will go with Giedrich, brother. Name your man. Sigurdjörg. 
I offer myself. Thank you, Basim. King Alfred. Wait. Hmm. Paladin Fulke. You with this company? I was, my lord. To recover from Edwin what was mine by right. Sigurd is the only man you need. He's worth more than 20 other men. He is the son of a king. Traitorous snake! And his heresies are profound, my lord. He claims to be a living god. I've got you, troll woman! Hush. I'll gift myself to you, King Alfred. Because it is not my fate to die by your hand. Brother. Have faith. For the Lord God watches over you all. This man is dangerous, my lord. Let me hold him. Do what you must. But treat him with care. All the gods bless him. What was that? I will shatter them. They shall not get away. Roland, Holger, why all this shouting? Eivor, thank Tyr. I heard shouting. Is something wrong? Holger robbed me, and I demand he be punished. Ha! Huh. Rot disappointed word. Does the deer rub the stream when she takes a drink? Does a cow rub a field when he crops on sweet grass? Eivor, this matter requires sensitive judgment. Will you? Of course. From the beginning, please. Well now, there is no excuse too small, I see. Nothing to keep you from coveting that seat, is there? In Sigurd's absence, who has better claim to oversee these disputes? You might leave them to work it out for themselves, but that would mean letting go, would it not? Please start again. Tell me all that has happened. I will start. I have been falsely accused by this Saxon Philistine. A filly what? Are you mocking me? Silence, please. I'll hear both of your complaints and render a decision, awarding compensation if needed. Understood? Rowan, tell me your version of these events. Huh. As you are aware, Holger and I are neighbors. Near enough that I often catch him at my stables, stealing my tools. Borrowing. Holger, let him speak. 
Stealing, borrowing... My point being, I have always allowed him to use whatever he pleased. I greatly admire your Norse generosity and had hoped to match it. But this morning, Holgir stretched the limits of my grace. Entering my stables for their feed, I found my most beautiful, gentle mare stripped of her tail. Bereft, not a strand in sight. I am ashamed to say my natural suspicion drew me to Holgir and how right I was. For when I peered across the lane, there he was, gripping a horsetail brush slathered with indigo, dragging it across a sheet of painting, Rowan. I was painting. You make it sound so crude. You see? Such willful arrogance. It will take ages for Ilgafu's tail to reach its former length. I demand compensation. I understand. Thank you, Rowan. Holger, let me hear your sight. Eivor, you have known me as a skald for years. You have seen how my poems bring life and joy and wisdom to our people. And you know that my work requires a certain, let us say, freedom. To make use of rare resources to compose my verses. Often, when lacking the proper tools, I have made use of novel items. All this is walking stick. Tovi's inks? All were given gladly. You cut off my horse's tail to make a brush, you bleed- Rowan? As I was saying, this morning in the throes of poetic reverie, I realized that my latest piece required delicate brushwork. I could have used a frayed stick, some cloth, my hands, but no. I needed something gentler, softer. To make a perfect brush, I needed the fine hairs of a well-raised horse. And so I availed myself of a local resource. You clipped Alcafer's tail to the rump without asking. It was early. I did not wish to wake you. Thank you, Holger. I believe I understand your position. I believe I have heard enough. If you will... My horse looks like a fool, Eivor. No handsomer than a donkey now. You must do something. Do not conflate hair with beauty, Rowan. She remains radiant. Elgifer's hair will grow back in no time. Quiet, both of you. Now listen. Rowan, however daft his approach, Holger meant you no harm and lost you no coin. The horse's hair will grow back. But... And you, Holger. Your habit of borrowing without asking ends today. Apologize to Rowan and greet us friends. This had best be a very good apology. It will be. Ahem. <clears throat> to you, O oh man of horses. I do offer my utmost apologies. And to Elgifer, most elegant of mares, I dedicate my finished work. You are respectively a king of men and a queen of horses, and I exalt you. I am sorry. Hmm. Rowan, does this satisfy you? As much as it can. I accept the apology. Good. Then by tears blessing let this matter rest. We are done here. Return to your homes in peace. Turn your tools, and offer you one of my paintings as a sign of goodwill. <laughs> Unless your paintings can regrow horse tails, I have no use. Oh, hello, Eivor. Good day. That Holger, he is quite the character. I almost envy him. To see the world through such a muddy glass and live with such petty concerns. He has no care in the world. Let's not walk too far with that idea. I need you right where you are. Ranvi, our work is done in Oxenefordshire, but the cost has been high. I feared as much when this letter arrived, from one called Fulke, addressed to you. From Fulke? Gods, that witch! It is there on the table.
full case with the Order of the Ancients. The same order Kyotve followed. The order that Bessem and Hytham have pledged to destroy. What has happened? Sigurd has been taken hostage, captured by King Alfred and given to a woman named Fulke, a very dangerous woman. What does she want with him? I will spare you Fulke's ramblings, but know this. Sigurd did his part to secure an alliance with a thane called Gidrich. Gidrich is an honest man and will come when I call. Until that time, Bassem will locate Fulke. Look for his message when it comes. Some interesting news. King Cheolvulva sent Cheolbert to Shropshire. He hopes to install him as Elderman there. Good for Cheolbert. He should do well considering all he has learned from you. I gave him only a taste of my knowledge. The rest he will need to figure for himself.